I started my presentation with the comparison of Bratislava and Vienna, and I will give you some figures only to know where we are. Bratislava is a city with 430,000 inhabitants. 430,000. Compared to Vienna, Vienna has four times more inhabitants. Looking on territory, Bratislava is 380 square kilometers. 380. Vienna is 415. So it's almost, almost equal. Looking to budget, the both cities have available. Bratislava is 220 million euros. Vienna, 11 billion. So it's 1 to 50. 1 to 50. The number of, of inhabitants is 1 to 4. The number of, of money available for the politics for implementing your plans, it's 1 to 50. I have some other figures, but I will only quote one of them. Number one for Vienna, ranking the quality of life. I have no figure for Bratislava. This is also important. This is not about money. This is about feeling how people in the city feel what they have available, what, what, what is for them the feeling that they live in the city and would like to be there. I would like to open my presentation and discussion with the three priorities I took as a mayor, newly elected in 2010, shortly after your mayor has been elected in the, in the municipal elections in Vienna. And I was elected as an independent mayor after 20 years with the right-wing mayors being elected in, the, in the Bratislava. So I am an independent mayor close to Social Democrats because I was the member of the Social Democratic Party now being not a member of any party, but still thinking and looking on the world through the social democratic eyes. My majority in the city council is right-wing. I have 32 right-wing members out of 45. So we have something like a cohabitation. <laughs> you need to respect the voters because they decided to send the social democratic mayor and the right-wing majority in the same time. So they gave us the responsibility to agree on the priorities and on things we will do and deliver to the people in four years. I told to my members, let's agree on three priorities. First is the open self-government, which I will shortly debate in detail. The second is transportation, because Bratislava is locked by cars, and we need to change the philosophy to support the public transport, cycling, and pedestrian movement, like if you do in Vienna for example, and the third priority is to enhance the quality of life, which is a really huge basket, comprehensive basket of certain concrete measures I would like to do in my four years term, because you can't solve everything, you can't change everything in four years, you have a limited time, limited resources, so you have to respect that you can do only something from your vision where the city should be. So these three priorities were presented to the members and generally they agreed, okay, let's do something in these three areas. I'm going to start only with uh, this open self-government because this is the area where you don't need too much money. You need a good will and you need to do certain measures which are helping to change the, the city in the, in the relation of the city and the citizens. Because this means for me an open self-government. First was my slogan on the, on the billboards before elections was we will open the magistrate for the people, which means that we will publish all the information which the people need. Because in previous term, my predecessor was a mayor looking on people, come once in a four years and then leave us to do our job because you have elected us. And I said, no, 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 this is not a self-government. Self-government means the people must be there. The people must know what you are doing and I'm trying to bring them closer to the decisions. Which means that I'm trying in Bratislava to enrich the representative democracy by the elements of participatory democracy. This is what we are trying to do. Firstly, to be open means giving all available information to the people, being transparent. We adopted a program for being transparent and anti-corruptive, which is very important in Bratislava or Slovakia's context. context. And we are trying to somehow use the participatory measures, how to bring people closer to decisions. 
not putting them aside as not important, but making them part of the self-government in the city. So, so this is what, what we are trying to do. This open magistrate means that we are publishing all the contracts and invoices on the web. It was then intention before elections, and then the government decided that we must do that. So we were ready to do that, and we are publishing all the invoices and contracts on the web. All the tenders, which were under supervision and speculation by the people if they are correct, are done in Bratislava by e-auctions, electronic auctions, which gave the open possibility to every bidder in the tender to decrease the, decrease the price of the service and to be number one. If you gave your an offer, two or three bidders are in the same tender and they presented their prices in the envelope, then you open envelopes and you finish in classical way of, of, of tendering. In electronic tendering, you can lower the price. You can be number three in first round, but if you go to electronic, electronic auction, you can decrease the price and you can be number one at the end, if you want to. If you deliver the service for lower price than you presented at the beginning. For us, it's very transparent because you have an electronic record from all the auctions. You can see who was starting with which price and where they ended. What was the result? You can, you can see how it went through. We are very actively working with our web page, publishing not only what we have to, but publishing almost everything the people want to know. And we have 100,000 unique visitors per month on our web page. Bratislava is 400,000. <coughs> Every four citizens, including elderly people, including children, every four, four, uh, fourth uh, citizen is looking on the web page every month. 100,000 unique visitors on the web page. So this is, this is what we are doing to open the Magistra. And then we started like inviting to people to, to speak to their mayor, which was not the case before. I know for you it may be something natural, but I'm, I, I, in, in, in starting, it started with something like open days, one in some months, people can come to, to see the mayor without any prior you know, announcement, and they are discussing with me the problems. We are sitting five hours, six hours, with 40, 50 people up to nine in the, in the evening, but I see the people needing that, because they are coming with 10 years old problems, some of them, they are coming with problems with housing, they are coming with everything, having a last station, last chance to tell to somebody that this is my problem, please help me. Because they have no good experience with Magistrat and whatever, so they need to, to see, the, see, the, see the mayor. Trying to change the atmosphere in the city means that we are trying to show to the people that they are important. In the last 20 years, the signals from the Magistrat were you are not so important. Once in a four years, when we have elections, please come. But then leave us to do, our, to do our job. And people became passive. There is a small group of NGO members who are very actively pushing and bringing their opinion. But the majority of the people is passive. How we will wait these people? How we will show them that it, that it cares, they care for their opinion? We have very important experience in the beginning of this year. There were announcement of the Secret Service files on the, on the national level, which brought the rallies to the main square in the city. After 20 years, we were on that square in that extent in 1989, when communism collapsed. And then Slovaks are very, you know, not very, not very decisive to go to, to strike or whatever. So we have very low number of strikes in 20 years. And now the big rallies. Because in that file, secret files, there was corruption. There were interest groups influencing the real politicians. People say, we don't want democracy like that. We'd like to change that. If they were asked by the, new, by the journalists, what do you want? There were you know, naive, naive proposals like, let's make constitution on the internet and things like that. But there was a disappointment of mainly young people with the state of our democracy in our country. They didn't believe or they don't believe the politicians because they think that they are corrupted and they are le leaded 
not by the public interest, but, but that by their own interest. <coughs> the change of this means the renewal of the confidence of the people. You can't do anything that. You need the politicians. You need the politics. You can't do without the politics. And I think that the most important is to change or start at the local level. We are closest to the people. Prime Minister can't speak to his people once in a month and to present this and that in publicly and hearing what they are saying. He can address them on the, on the television. I can address my people, inviting them to the biggest hall we have and speaking to them. So this bringing closer the people and to show them that we care for their opinion is also the renewal of the confidence to politicians and to politics. But you must be open and you must be transparent enough for the people to know that you are serious in that, in that intention. And this is the reason why we adopted something we call the anti-corruption minimum, which was the analysis produced by Transparency International Slovakia before local elections, somehow evaluating biggest municipalities in Slovakia, how they behave according to transparency. If they are transparent in social housing, in rental housing, how they give the priority to, to the people who will give, who will get the rent house first and who the second and who number them, I don't know what. There was a big scandal before elections because the mayor, which was mayor before me, gave the rental housing to people very influential, rich, for very low price, they come to the municipal houses, which they bought according to law, which is valid in Slovakia, and these houses disappeared from the municipal property. So we adopted a document with transparency measures. We are now doing one by one, and it's 80 measures in personal policy, tenders, social care, urban planning, city budgeting, etc., etc. Once in a year, we are obliged to report to the council city council where we went in this direction to be transparent according to program we have and last point I would like to mention in the in the, in the beginning is the question of participatory budgeting we strongly believe that this can be a tool for awaiting, awaiting the people the idea came from Latin America where they decided in Porto Alegre that they will give a chance to the people to decide on the public money the city has available on their own. Strange, because in general, according to law, the members of city council are, are obliged to decide. They have the chance to decide. And in Porto Alegre, they decided to give the right to the people. And the councillors were saying, we will respect what the people will do. We started with this in Bratislava as an experiment. But this is something which <coughs> came from Latin America also to Europe. <coughs> And you have Rome, you have Berlin, we have some other cities which are using this concept, inviting the people to decide about certain part of the city's budget. Because you need <coughs> transportation, this and that, and you leave certain area for the people. In Porto Alegre, they come to 100%, which is a dream for Europe. Nobody in Europe is using the concept like that. But we were trying to, or we were, we were successful in getting new active people coming and proposing their projects, because what I'm saying about participatory budget, I told to the people involved, you are doing the same job as the politicians. You have limited amount of money, you have many projects, many ideas, what can be done with this public money, and you have to solve what is the priority. This is what the politicians are doing. You also have dreams, you want to achieve this and that and that and that, and then you realize that you have only limited amount of money, your role is to decide where the public money will be, will be allocated. This is what people are doing in participatory budget. We have the same problem with 30,000 euro, which we started with last this year, as if you were, as you were doing with 1 million. It's the same. Still, you don't have enough money for all the projects you would like to finance. So we started with a very limited amount of money. And we were able to get 200 very active people discussing the projects, deliberating the projects at the end. And then we have a list. This is number one, number two, number five, number, I don't know, 10. And these 10 projects are financed and organized and implemented by the city, as if they were decided by the city councillors. They were decided by the people of Bratislava. 
with the open access to the whole project, because everybody can be a part of that. He will then decide in which community he will work, the senior, junior, territorial division according to the wish of the people. And these communities are presenting projects, and we have some very interesting discussion also with this limited amount of money, the people are ready to produce ideas which probably we will not come to, because we are occupied with the big projects, with big ideas in the frame of the city. And they come, I, we need this, we need that. The senior junior center, where the contact between juniors and seniors can, can be implemented. Good idea, and we find a place, and there is a small amount of money to support this. So this participatory budgeting for me is a tool how to avoid <coughs> another people besides this NGO working who are fighting for in the last 10 years with, with all this, this uh, not acceptance from the side of the city and to give people the chance to influence the most important part of the politics which is money. If you allocate the money for something then it is serious. You can speak long about this and that if you finance it, if you realize that, if you implement that, then it's a concrete result. And we need in local politics the concrete results. This is why people gave us the confidence. This is why they vote for us. They believed that our programs, our promises, will be real in four years. <coughs> we should deliver something to them. And part of this is that we invite the people to be part of the game. Not the representative democracy, them. It's about us. We are the part of the city. We would like to influence what the city is doing. It's not the only way how we are, are inviting the people. We open the series of public debates, and really the mayor and the vice mayors are taking part, discussing with the people major investment projects, because Bratislava is going through a big changes period in the last 20 years. New shopping centers, new skyscrapers, whatever. But the developers were, you know, pushing for building, for building and constructing this and that. The public was not heard. Public was not the part of the game. The city was too weak in defending the public interest. And we are now changing the attitude and saying, no, no, no. We would like to speak with the people and to hear their opinion on this investment, that investment, new ideas, changing the face of the city. So this is also participation in different sense than the participatory budgeting, but bringing and changing the atmosphere in Bratislava. So we would like to be open, transparent, and participatory city. <coughs> this is priority number one, in which we moved quite far in first and second year of my election term. The other two areas are not that easy, but we can probably speak also about them if you will be interested in the discussion, because for transportation, you need a lot of money to, to do anything. You need the money. So we have some, we have some plans, we have some projects. If you'll be interested, I would very much like to, to talk about that. But my <coughs> most important point was the priority in which we really moved ahead and we have the results. We have the real experience how to awake the passive people to make them active citizens. Last remark is don't expect that you will have 100% active people. No chance. Maybe 10%. It's a fantastic result. Mm -hmm. It will be 40,000 people from my city. I have 200 NGO pushing, members of NGOs pushing for 10 years and knocking on the doors which were closed. Now we are meeting on a <coughs> monthly basis, discussing the problems and I'm giving my results, what we achieved, where we should move, and I hear their opinion because I know these people know something about the city. They are trying to influence it, believing that it will be a city for all the citizens and also for them. <laughs>